Alright, so I'll be talking about how I'm going to be using andragogy uh, in my final video uh, for our class. Um, with the content that I'm teaching, with the students that I normally teach, um, they're not really at the level of an adult learner. They're, you know, pre-teen to teen age students, about 12 to 13 years old. Um, so when we look at andragogy in terms of the lesson that I'm going to be teaching, uh, along with the fact that it is also a recorded online lesson, um, the entire lesson itself can't really be designed around the concept of the adult learner, but there are definitely aspects to Andropy that can be used and implemented in the lesson. So the first part of anagogy um, that I'll go over is the students need to know, or why do they need to know what we're teaching them? And when students get to a certain age, they kind of want to understand, outside of the concept of, well, you'll be tested on this later, why they are learning what they're learning. And the, con and the realm of the lesson I'm teaching, I'm teaching narrative point of view and literature. Why do students need to know that? So at the beginning of the lesson, I will be covering how that information um, is going to be used um, not just in the days and weeks to follow, but you know throughout the rest of their school career and potentially even after they graduate middle school, high school, and go out into the real world when they're reading things like news articles and, and fictional literature and things like that. So the next part I'll be talking about will be the student self-concept. Now this is difficult to cover in the video lesson for multiple ways. One in a video lesson, it's pre-recorded lesson, it's hard to, you know, have a student take more ownership of their learning. It's more so them sitting there and listening and taking in the information that you're giving them. And then on top of that, I also, I'm also teaching a lesson towards 12 and 13 year olds where they're getting to that point where we can give them more control over the content um, they're learning, but you know, based off the K through 12 environment, as a teacher, I still have to have the vast majority of the control. Um, and really the option of choice comes in more so in some cases in the assessment area as opposed to the actual content teaching area. So what I'll likely do is at the end of the video, I'll instruct students that they will have the choice over, you know, in the articles they pick and the short stories they pick um, in order to have us practice identifying uh, the narrative point of view that is a that is apparent in those pieces of literature, and that's the, where they will have the choice. Um, whereas in the lesson, I won't. I really won't be able to give them too many options. The next thing I'll be covering is the role of the learner's previous experience. Um, in terms of this lesson, um, I can think off the top of my head, I didn't put this in my storyboard, but what I would likely do is refer back to a um, novel that we've read together as a class to identify like, well, what point of view do you think that was? Let's, maybe let's pull these novels back out, let's pull the story back out and let's read a section and let's specifically pay attention to how the narrator is presenting the story. Um, you know, depending on how that narrator is presenting that, students should be able to answer whether they think it's first person, third person limited, third person omniscient. Um, and they can apply the experience of re reading this previous story and then going through this previous story and identifying that point of view to apply their current knowledge in their previous experience. Next part I'll be going over is how I'll be go, uh, covering the students' readiness to learn in my final video lesson. And that's pretty simple. I'll just be at the beginning of the lesson as part of my um, self-recording that will start off the lesson. I'll be going over things like the students' learning objectives, be reminding students, you know, please make sure that you've tucked yourself away in a private spot where you won't be disturbed uh, during the lesson. Maybe take a moment to take a deep breath to push out the, maybe some previous frustrations through the day and get yourself mentally focused on the lesson at hand. Just some sort of quick beginning lesson thing that's going to take 10, 15 seconds to do then with the covering of learning objectives um, should get students 
uh, in the mind, mind frame of learning a lesson. Moving along to the orientation of learning, I'm hoping to be able to accomplish this section by covering with my students the different types of literature they can expect to see these different points of view used in. You know, for example, you're not going to see third-person omniscient point of view apparent in a news article describing some sort of world event, right? Different types of point of view are good for different types of situations. Um, one of the most confusing ones for student and second person, because it's so, you, know, you don't see it so often, but when you point out, it's like, it's, it's direction-based. When your mom writes you a list of directions to follow, how does she write it? She says, I need you to do this, I need you to do that, that second person. Popping up these examples and explaining them to students, I'm hoping we'll, we'll be able to apply that experience and then understand you know, why this is an important why this is important and apply it to those things to help keep their attention. And the final part of andragogy that I will be hitting as part of my final video lesson will be the motivation aspect. And I'm going to be going at this more so the way I tried to go about it uh, during the whole school shutdown during the COVID pandemic. Um, kids weren't necessarily being motivated by grades at this point. Um, Kids weren't necessarily being motivated by parent rewards or repercussions at this point. Um, really, all that we could do was to heap praise and thanks on students who were still taking part in the education process with us. So my plan will be to you know open up with a big you know thank you guys for coming today. I really appreciate it. I miss you. And at the end, you know, follow it up with like thank you guys for being here. I'm really looking forward to see you all in class again uh, here in the fall, and I hope you all have a wonder, wonderful summer vacation. I'm going to be hitting on you know, the fact of how much I miss seeing my students and how thankful I am for students that stuck it out with me um, throughout the quarter. And that's pretty much the only way that I can see how to hit on this aspect here, uh, especially considering it's recorded and it is with students or uh, middle school age students.